thank you guys for coming. Um, I will make it short because we're a bit late due to video problems, but as you can see, we got it fixed. Uh, welcome to the event room. Uh, it's the 14th year I do this. Um, I hope you will all enjoy this and uh, enjoy the rest of Austin. And then, no, for the top, I'm going to do it. Go ahead. Okay, so I talked about the complete tool chain for the SDM8, which is a relatively new tool chain, though monthly tools have been there a long time ago. Now, let's see, this is a table of contents, and of course, one important thing is the SDM8 pathway itself. Another um, the central piece of the tool chain is SDCC, the small device C compiler, the compiler kind of thing. These microcontrollers. Other important parts around it are uh, tools to bring our programs onto the hardware. STMA Flash is the most important one at the moment. The ST Link hardware is a, a kind of hardware dongle to allow in system programming. Um, STMA card uses the integrated boot loader to uh, get uh, the program onto the STMA via serial line. We also have support in OpenOCD to uh, take the program onto the hardware by the same way to the new debugger for debugging. And uh, of course, also because there are slightly higher level tools, there's a bit of support in IDEs. And also, there's this LLVM plus FTCC experimental tool chain, which essentially combines the uh, LLVMs, front ends, and high level optimizations with the low level optimizations and back ends of FTCC. Okay, so I start with the SDMA itself. Now the SDMA is a high performance 8-bit uh, core, so 8-bit means it's still small, but it's per clock quite a bit faster than many older buttons, such as an 8051. Actually, um, even at 60 megahertz, uh, the SDMA seems to easily beat in 100 megahertz, 8051, and I think it's a benchmark. It has a rather rich set of peripherals um, that are similar to the maybe known to some of you bigger STM32 controllers. These are the STM32 are ARM based STM32 controllers. The architecture is relatively C, a C family for such a microcontroller, in particular the MSF for the relative addressing mode. The biggest devices have 6 kilobytes of RAM, 128 kilobytes of flash, 2 kilobytes of ink, uh, EEPO. But there's all the smaller ones, it's just uh, one and a half kilobytes of RAM, maybe eight kilobytes of flash, uh, and a few bytes actually no EEPROM. Those things, especially the small ones, are really cheap. So you can, even in the standard normal distributors like Yishiki, you can have large amounts, uh, the smaller ones are 20 cents, so if you really need a lot, you can probably get them in 10 cents easily. Billions have been made, last time ST announced anything, and was a uh, I think 2016 that they have sold already 2 billion. They're not that big on advertising them anymore. I think they want people to move to the bigger STM32 device. But there's a lot of them out there. There are a lot of places for heating thermostats to vehicles. Um, one uh, relatively recent project in um, our tool chain is uh, developing free firmware for e bikes uh, that have STM8 controllers in them. But there's a lot of them out there, which means they want free tools to be able to work with that. Okay, so probably the most important part of the tool chain is the compiler targeting the SDMA. Now, SDCC is a standard C compiler. It has reasonable support even for current C standards, um, not include the GCC or LLVM, but uh, typically better than non free compilers for such small microcontrollers. We usually use a freestanding implementation, but it also could be part of a hosted implementation. There are supporting tools like the sampling and simulators within the project. It works on plenty of host systems. Um, it targets a lot of other 8 bit architectures as well, like the aforementioned 8051, the classic Z80, certain variants of that. Um, and in the freestyle, SCOA should be mentioned, and the microchip. Big, but those are still in development and uh, up to the quality of the back, uh, are other back -end. It has some unused optimizations that are very suitable for these small targets that you won't find in CCC or LLVM. In particular, in register allocation, because these all architectures tend to have a very irregular architecture. You're not like this, where you have a 
some uh, instruction that you can use any register in it now. Some instructions only on some registers, other instructions have similar, different kind of clock cycles and even code size depending on which register they use. Um, this makes it a bit harder to do register location. You can't do this standard love coloring Chinese stuff that you see here in Wendel. But you have very interesting register locations based like on graph factor theory. You can allocate registers optimally. Um, Given a certain bound on the number of nodes that program and uses per function. And uh, this is not a fast register help, that's actually quite slow, but um, it gives us good optimization for these small architectures. You can control the compilation speed code quality trade off, so long compilation time for small binaries on the other way around. For the estimate, you can actually do register allocations by five. So that means that you have a 32 bit variable, it might be that 16 bits of that variable are in the 16 bit register, another 8 bits have been split on the stack, and some other 8 bits have been allocated to the main bit register. So, any byte of any register is considered a possible storage location, so we can actually use the registers in real ways, not even in kind of the design of the architecture. Okay, so. Um, Next question is how reliable is a compiler? You don't want compilers to have too many bugs. Now, uh, as you see, does regression testing on Microsoft networks on various host architectures, on target architectures. It's about 10,000 tests. Many of them uh, are from fixed bugs. Some are introduced with these features, and a lot of them have been taken from the GCC regression uh, tests. Okay, we used to have a bit more our systems, our uh, automatic compiler farm, a few went down in the other have been uh, people to maintain it for Solaris and FreeBSD and FreeBSD used to be among them and we used to have uh, two smart machines and maybe we can bring up a few machines again sometime. So now how does Google compile to the non stick compilers? Uh, compared to non stick compilers now, SCCC thing is that the release is not out yet, but I hope it will come very, very soon, and I don't see big changes. So, uh, uh, for 670, I just used our current development snapshot, and 350 was released from uh, mid 2015. Um, okay, and Cosmic Resonance IRA are non stick compilers. Resonance are used uh, there. Also, the latest version from 2015 is hard to get a license for the emulation version. For Cosmic and IIR, I use the current version. You can see in Redstone, which is a floating point benchmark, uh, they get a like, much faster count. As you can see, it moved a little bit by about 5 to 10 percent in those two years, but not much. But what usually matters on the small integer, uh, on the small microcontroller, is integer performance. And here we have the Redstone and Coma in integer benchmark. And we see that SDCC in those uh, from 350 to 370 went essentially from worst to best. The benchmark scores and that means all the integer performance both for Bystone and for Corma. So thanks to both our register allocator stuff, a few other optimizations, and of course a huge leaking for things that matter in these benchmarks. Um, I mean Bystone depends a lot on performance in uh, the standard library string processing functions so or optimizations we did there also contribution to better scores. Or mark depends a little on integer modifications or you know, optimizations we did there contributed a lot to us being good there. Now in code size, yes we improved a bit the um, things, so code size went down across all benchmarks, but we're still not at the level of uh, resonance. Yeah? The resonance, uh, they are really good at code size and there's quite something to be done, but if you look at the big picture of how we compare to those compilers, um, SPCC in the current version is doing really better. Yeah? Code size is only the main weakness and only resonance is really doing better, which uh, is not good at standard compliance or code speed or anything else. Now, yeah. Now, SPCC is only a compiler that runs on a lot of operating systems. Cosmic actually has a runs on, on uh, new Linux as well, but we're not free. Yeah, we now have the fastest code, and the best is standard compliance. No, 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 the only compilers does even have the C11 mode. And the C99 modes, except for IAR, also modern companies, and the one of SPCC. 
Okay, so much for the SDCC. Since we're talking about compilers, if you click words about uh, the LLVM plus SDCC tool chain, basically the idea is you use the LLVM key from the backends. Now the backend is no longer officially part of LLVM, so it's a separate project. The output C code that is then uh, into SDCC, this allows um, us to use the language content for other languages at C and uh, the island optimizations from LLVM. But this thing is quite experimental and we have plenty of issues remaining, both on the LLVM and the SDCC side. I mean, the code output from this LLVM uh, end is a bit special, so C is not that optimized for it, so you think that. Uh, not that efficient as the LLVM feedback and uh, all the new issues that I just like all the time and the Okay, now SDMH left, the program to bring our programs onto the SDMH devices. Uh, are you already holding it up or? Oh, okay. So they already saw the time up, see? <laughs> Good program. Okay. So, um, yeah, and also inviting a flash key for option bytes, it's about all the known SDMA variants. And um, it uses the SD link, which is the official device, which I'll talk about a bit later. And now there's also some ESP SD links on an ESP device with some free firmware on it that is supported by this one. SDMA GAL is kind of for some purposes an alternative. It uses the integrated bootloader that a lot of SDMA but of all devices have. It also allows the inviting a flash, so we can use it to bring the programs onto the device. Um, one problem is that for some SDMA, it uses needs an on-free block, so this bootloader has some communication code, but apparently not for all devices this bootloader is sufficient. In terms of what it does, so um, <coughs> Uh, this non free block, of course, one would want uh, replaced by free software, but for some devices, uh, it's an alternative as the main flash. Okay, now let's look at the openness uh, OCD and GD uh, and uh, debugger side. Now, um, there's patches to open OCD that have been merged recently and immediately. Uh, no, the new to be merged. Uh, I don't think we can even be permitted upstream. For SDMA support and support for the SD link, and uh, this uh, means it only even allows on target debugging, which is uh, kind of a great feature. But uh, the compiler is only needs, um, but it still it does need this, this SD link uh, for the device by SD, the target level that has non free firmware. Okay, a few quick words about. Um, Support in IDEs. Now there's a bit of support in Eclipse and OpenOS DD. For Eclipse, we have this Eclipse SDCC code plugin. It's from 2006. It uh, definitely needs updating to work with current SDCC well and with current Eclipse. Um, probably someone familiar with Java or Eclipse. Now, um, TI thinks they also um, have their own fork of. Uh, some Eclipse SCCC based thing, but on 8051 actually has written up as a version of the plugin. So one needs to look at that and see what can be merged upstream. The backend support works in Eclipse without the plugin using the DDB of the OCD support that I uh, had on the previous slide. Okay, now for the blog set plugin, um, that's for current SCCC. Um, I mean, the plugin was there for years, uh, a few months ago, I had a look at it and updated it for current SDCC. From the current release, um, there's a part for SDCC, but I guess it needs more testing and improvements, uh, depending on what users want and the debugging support on the on target debugging isn't there yet. Okay, now the last part will be the ST link that are the local that uh, is used. The rest are made by ST, about this big, yeah, um, but there's a lot of smaller, cheap uh, Chinese codes that not all of them use non free firmware. So, this is a one last non free bit that we need to deal with apart from the bootloader issue. 
The however R uh, three alternatives in Rattling, ESP, ST link, which is a ESP hardware with some free firmware on it. They are worked on the ST link flash, but uh, not with a debugging yet. And there's, there's UPOC 2 hardware, which uh, has its own software, um, but it's also only uh, writing written to flash memory, not debugging yet. Okay, so let's go to the to do list. Now, what there's still plenty to be done. I mean, SPCC needs more developers. We used to have more two years back, but I mean, interest rate that microcontrollers has turned down a bit, and so also um, development is not as active as it used to be. We also need to fix a few SPCC bugs and improve SPCC further. Standard compliance, yes, we do better than the non-free compilers, but there's still a gap towards what people expect these days at GCC or LLVM. There's more optimizations to be done. The debug info is not perfect yet, especially when it comes uh, to local variables. And the LLVM plus SDCC tool chain, as I said, is still experimental. It could offer some benefits in terms of language support, additional optimizations, so there's more work to be done there. And the integration, as I mentioned, mostly on the flip side, but also for the box needs improvement. Now, this is something I didn't mention before, the real-time operating systems. Of course, some people want, for some tasks, to use real-time operating systems for microcontrollers. And um, quite a few real-time operating systems have been ported to SDCC. There are still some that only work with the monthly compilers. And the big systems like uh, Riot or something, or uh, FreeRTOS, are not even available from the SDMA yet. So there one would have to make a port both to the hardware and uh, to the software. And then of course, the firmware and good loader semi. Ideal would be that uh, this attack it from many sides, like for the ST-Link itself, have free firmware for that one, then get support for the free firmware alternatives that are already there, for the work with different hardware in all the tools, and for the boot loader also uh, get free replacements on the binary blocks that are used in there. Okay, so uh, a quick summary for which I don't have a slide. We now do have a reasonably well-working free tool chain for the STM8. Even though uh, non-free tools were there years earlier, in some ways we have surpassed the non-free tools already, in particular in terms of code speed and some other uh, aspects of the compiler. We're getting the right kind of supporting tools, IDE integration, the other small tools, like estimation and estimation that are around it. But there's still a bit more to be done, especially in integration, in code size, also to catch up. Also, in some aspects to catch up with the laundry tools, and in other aspects we we'll get even further ahead. Okay, so I'd say that's it from my side. Any questions? In one of the first slides, you uh, said that it was a C friendly architecture. Yes. You should elaborate on that. Uh, yeah. Well, I see um, C, for example. Oh, I think I need to go. Okay. So the question was asked uh, what does it mean that FDMA is a C friendly architecture? Okay, now C tends to naturally compile well on things that where you can use the stack well, yeah? Local variable if they don't go in matches, the natural place for them is to go onto the stack, because that allows the kernel. You want um, call and return instructions for easily function calling and returning all on the stack. Not all the AP microcontrollers have that. Yeah? As I said AP, for example, has a call and return instructions, but you need to go via an index register, via frame point, if you get one to access the variables on the stack. And some other microcontrollers, like the MCS 51 or the 8051 variants, or uh, the big microcontrollers, don't even have a stack relative addressing mode, so it's even harder. You have to, like, like okay, get the stack value somewhere, add some offset, and then put it into an index register, and then it goes through there, and you need many instructions to access the variable on the stack. And for the PIX, for example, it's even have a hardware stack, so not a stack pointer, don't need to memory, but some of them have a hardware stack with limited depth, so you can't even do recursion easily. So the, if you're going beyond the 
four levels of function calls, you have to manually move things around, then you don't have good support for the function calling of the styles you want. But while the SPM8 it has this stack one that the passing mode, well only with the engine offset, but for most functions that's good enough. It has an uh, instruction that this, the stack one that relative to passing now. It's efficient. Yeah, some other architectures have it, but you see that it has to essentially be added on later and the instructions, the stack one the relative passing mode are relatively long. But these are uh, relatively compact instructions. So most instructions with stack one the relative passing only two bytes. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Now, as I mentioned, SDCC uh, needs more developers, and one problem is that LLVM is kind of a moving target. Yeah? So you have to put substantial development effort in if you bind yourself to the LLVM AI, IR. And because SDCC does not have that much developer manpower at the moment, I think it's better to be more cautious and have C as an abstraction layer because then um, we don't have to put too much developer effort on the SDCC side into this combination and uh, yeah, and SDCC still uh, is there as a standalone C compiler so even if we don't have, are not able to maintain this combination uh, we plus SDCC anymore, we are still there as a C compiler. Any further questions? Okay, I think we would still have about three minutes, but if there's no questions, then I... Ah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, what about... Uh, so, does uh, GDD work through uh, STRIM or OpenLCD, or actually is it possible to work this? Uh, what is the best way to work with this GDD on STMK? The best way to work with the compiler in terms of the tool right now? GDD. With the debugger? Yes, debugger. Oh, okay. Now the, the best way to know it is to um, compile the stuff with SDCC with the back output to L, then use uh, GDD uh, with open OCD and while understanding it to put it into the STMA and then you can just uh, set breakpoints and charge normally. Um, they're not that good uh, with debug information, especially for some local variables, depending on how they can allocate it. So if you want to fit the value of the local variable, it is not working as well as uh, what you might uh, be familiar with from other tool chains, but most of the time it can work in the local variables. So, OpenCD, plus STLink, plus uh, OpenOCD, plus uh, GDD, which is standing on the SDMA, SDCC as a compiler, and if you want uh, some IDE on the top. Okay, any further questions? What? I don't see any, so then that's it. <laughs>